for the race weekend, c'est fini. <laughs> Well, we said yesterday that it was going to be closer. I'm not sure that Max Verstappen expected it to be this close. The soft uh, Pirelli compounds have brought the field to him, which is kind of logical in a way because softer tires give you more grip. And if there's more grip out there to be taken from the tires, it kind of eases the job of the teams that don't have the same downforce efficiency as, say, Red Bull. So uh, after qualifying, Max Verstappen on the pole, but only just on the pole, and his demeanor reflected uh, a bit of nervousness there because obviously they have a great package at Red Bull Honda, but to have a McLaren Mercedes, McLaren Mercedes, right up there doing the same lap time was um, certainly got their attention. So no taking away from the job Max did today and the team did, and they got Sergio Perez into P3 as well. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Just talking about Sergio, we kind of, oh yeah, Sergio was P3, take it for granted, yeah, and the other Red Bull. Actually, for Sergio Perez, it's becoming the mega year. He's never had a season like this where he can just get in a car on a Saturday morning and know that all being equal, there's a very good chance he's going to qualify near or on the front row. He's never been in that position before, and he's making very good use of the package around him. But anyway, to get back to Max and the job he did, two laps, almost identical in lap time. Obviously, there's an issue in Austria in terms of getting a free lap as well and timing that lap, getting the tyres absolutely right. And I think so far as getting all those variables working for him and managing them. I think Max did 100% really, no question about that. But before we get into any of that, let's just have a look at Lando Norris's weekend because yesterday he looked pretty quick, but did his usual thing of bit Lewis Hamilton-like really, when it didn't really matter on Friday, getting the feel for the limits of the car again on this circuit, which is all about limits and precision, exactly how late can you break in order to have the platform you need and not risk running wide? Well, he ran wide a few times and he had a few moments and he had a few deleted lap times, but that was Friday and that's what it was all about for Lando Norris, obviously also running the Pirelli test tire as well. And then this morning, not really getting in a very quick lap on the soft tire. He'd done his homework, he was preparing, thinking about the race, putting a bit of fuel in the car, making sure they had some sort of balance that they could manage after the dramas of last weekend, when they were really quick, remember, but then very quickly ate through their tires uh, with a heavy fuel load early in the race. So that wasn't gonna happen again this time around. And it's interesting to see how uh, Lando and McLaren have learned from that and how they were changing the way they approached the weekend. So much so that with confidence, they ran the medium tire in Q2. And when Lando said later after qualifying, you know, that was probably the best lap I've ever driven, I would say I think the lap he did on the medium tire was maybe the best lap he ever drove because that was the lap that made both Mercedes drivers, certainly both Red Bull Honda drivers, look up and say, we have a new opponent here and it's called Lando Norris in the McLaren Mercedes. Absolutely superb lap on the medium tire. And even on the second run, when it's tempting to think, oh, maybe everybody's gonna go quicker, we'll go to the soft tire, they stuck with the medium. And it's on the medium, like the two Mercedes drivers, but much more importantly, like the two Red Bull Honda drivers, that Lando Norris will be starting tomorrow in really, really good shape. I think it's the first McLaren front row since, sort of, we have to go back to the Lewis Hamilton, Jensen Button era, I would guess, when, uh, when they had a really quick car then as well. So what does that tell us? Obviously about the speed of the cars in Austria, but perhaps going forward from here, well, it tells us categorically that a high rate car and McLaren is another of the great high rate cars is always gonna beat a low rate car on a circuit like Austria where the straights are not that long. We had a rare glimpse of a different Lewis Hamilton today. It was a kind of a bittersweet day for him because he timed his announcement of continuing his Mercedes Formula One deal continuing in Formula One for another two years, uh, I think very well. At a moment when the team are discombobulated, they're looking at a race that potentially, for the first time in a long time, they know is going to be really, really difficult for them in the dry. And there's Lewis saying, OK, I believe in all this. I want all this. I'm loving all this. I'm going to stay with it for another two years. It's a perfectly timed decision and announcement to make at the time when the team needs that. And I'm sure that's what was in 
Lewis's thinking in terms of its timing. And obviously good that he still has the motivation and he's still in loving it so much that he wants to continue. But then, and then we saw this morning in, in FP3, Lewis's engineer getting onto the radio to say to him, Lewis, you're breaking a bit too early for turn three, you're carrying a bit too much speed into turn three, which is always an, uh, an inviting thing to do. Obviously, get on the power soon, try to get the, the highest possible minimum speed. Um, but the engineer probably quite rightly pointing out that what Lewis really needed was a better rotation to get the car straight and out of the hill and to get more pace out of the corner rather than into it. Uh, and that's a trap that a lot of drivers do fall into with turn three. And I thought it was interesting that, um, that it was Lewis Hamilton that we were hearing this uh, instruction going to this seven times world champion with all that experience. How, how many times has he driven around that corner? Toto may well say, oh yeah, well, of course, you know, we're focusing on next year's car or whatever. You know, that's what he would say. Uh, the reality is everybody at Mercedes wants to win the world championship this year. And of, obviously the new car is there in the background, but at the same time, they're gonna be absolutely flat out 100% to get this car back as a winner. Anyway, that's Mercedes. Um, the other big story of Qualified. Two, two other huge stories. Three, three huge stories of qualifying. One, George Russell made it through into Q3. Absolutely brilliant uh, in the Williams Mercedes. He's been looking as if he's going to do that for quite a while, and he did it relatively easily on medium tyres. Would you believe? Just superb. I think that lap goes right up there with Lando's in terms of its quality. In some respects, even better. Bearing in mind where Williams are coming from. So excellent lap from George and really quick in a straight line, 319 kilometers an hour, where Lewis was doing 313, um, 317, where Lewis was doing 311. That's a Mercedes engine. So that's obviously the Williams has less downforce, but less drag as well. And George making really good use of that. Both Ferraris failed to get through into Q3, partly tripping over themselves running the medium tire on the second run when it looked like they were really going to be in trouble and, and struggling to get into Q3. But then again, thinking about it, they're probably thinking, so what would be better in this race to start P8 on soft tires or to start P11 on the medium tire? There's obviously quite a big difference between the two. And I'm not saying that that justifies Ferrari's decision, but probably that's what they'll be saying now as they're sitting down in the motorhome. But from where we were saying yesterday that Ferrari appeared to have closed the gap a bit by getting a bit more top speed when it actually came down to it. In reality, it hasn't helped them that much. Uh, 308 kilometers an hour through the main trap this morning. Sergio Perez was 310, Fernando Alonso 309, Lewis Hamilton 308. So they're there or thereabouts, but it's hurt them on the rest of the lap now, and that's pretty clear. The final big thing about qualifying was Fernando Alonso, who I think would have made it through to Q3. He was definitely green on his first two sectors. When he came upon Sebastian Vettel going into turn 10, watching it on board, it was like, whoa, <laughs> what's happened here? And, and Fernando was quite a shock. He had to come right out of the power to miss him. And this to the, in the background of all the teams being told by Michael Massey correctly not to do that through turns nine and 10, as tempting as it is to try to give yourself a gap to the car in front through those two corners, they'd specifically been told not to do it too slowly through nine and 10, because they're both blind corners and they're both, as a result, the approach speed is gonna be a really, really dangerous one. So um, whether or not Vettel now gets a penalty remains to be seen. I suspect he probably will, because it was so blatant. But more importantly, a great shame for Fernando, who now starts uh, 14th. Uh, you know, right down with Daniel Ricciardo behind the two Ferraris um, and just here of Antonio Giovinazzi. So yeah, a disappointing, very disappointing, very frustrating and an extremely angry Fernando Alonso after qualifying, particularly as, as he said, you know, would have been comfortably in Q3 and could well have qualified around the sort of Pierre Gasly area. He was showing that pace uh, in qualifying. So yeah, a, an amazing qualifying session. Lots of orange in the grandstands. Max Verstappen will say they're all there for him. Uh, Landon Norris quite correct. They said, no, 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 they're all McLaren orange fans. Uh, so, so take your pick there. But lots of fans and lots of noise and lots of atmosphere. So it's all starting to feel a little bit like a Formula One season again, which is pretty good for all of us. However, having said all of that, prediction for tomorrow still is for thunderstorms. So all of that could change and we may see some amazing 
drive through the field from a Lewis Hamilton or from a Fernando Alonso. But right now, even if it's wet, the man in front, the man on the pole will have the best view of the racetrack. That is for sure. And that man, of course, is Max Verstappen, who tomorrow will be setting out to try to win his third successive Grand Prix. Really should have been fourth because he should have won Baku. And Max doing that from his third consecutive pole. And he's had four in the season so far. See what happens tomorrow. See you then.